Hey guys, it's Kenna. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are repotting this philodendron giganteum. It's a little sad, but it's been acclimating to my house for the past two weeks and it desperately, desperately needs repotted and given a pole to climb. It does need something to hold on to in order to stay upright. And there are a lot of aerial roots that are trying to grab on anything. I'll show you guys a close up. But look at this, look at how sad these leaves are. If you were following along on my Instagram, you know where I got this, but I refuse to bash anybody. So I'm gonna leave the um, name of the company that I bought this from out of it. This plant needs some rehab. So what I'm doing is I'm putting it into this pot, but I'm using a nursery pot instead so that it fits nicely in here and I don't have to worry about switching planters. Cause if you're like me, you probably switch your planters or repot the same plant over and over and over again until you find the right fit. So find a pot that is the right size for this plant and for a pole, which I'll leave a link in the description for how to make these moss poles. And I also have my aeroid mix that I made following Kaylee Ellen's amazing instructions. Follow her on YouTube. She's just, she's the bomb. This has orchid bark, cocoa coir, pumice, activated charcoal, and worm castings. So I will leave a link in the description for her video on how to make this stuff. It is just amazing. I've never had a problem with the plant that has been in this stuff. <laughs> if you are a severe overwaterer, definitely add more orchid bark and more um, pumice. If you are an underwaterer, add less of it. So I may have to cut some of these leaves off just so that they will generate more energy for the rest of the plant, like this leaf here. That one is the saddest leaf. I'm gonna do a before reference. I have a small head. <laughs> First, we will take this guy out. I have not watered him yet, so he is looking a little bit more droopy than he normally is, but this is a very, very droopy plant. So I'm just checking the roots. I'm not getting rid of the soil completely, just because you want it to still have some of the microorganisms that are in here that it's used to. I'm not very good at talking and repotting at the same time. All right, here's my root system. It's a little small for this here. If I wasn't putting a moss pole in it, I definitely would not put it in this pot. And also because my soil drains so well, it's okay that I'm putting it in such a big pot. If I suspected any kind of pests or disease, I would not just be swiping the soil away. I would be completely cleaning my table and these roots and the plant. I mean, you do still wash your plant, but I wouldn't be taking all of the soil off. I'm gonna cut away some of these dead aerial roots. Probably this dying leaf as well. Hey, we got a little root, uh, aerial root nub. And I just discovered this cutie this morning. So we're left with three leaves. And the new one that came in is a little sad too, but that's what you get when you ship during a pandemic. Okay, this is going in towards the back. So I want to hide that sticker. There we go. Okay, so it's going right here. We're going to add some of this soil in. I'm using clean hands, by the way. Always wash your hands before and after. So I'm throwing in some soil um, inside of the bottom of this so that it can stand up easier. And that's part of the reason why I didn't put moss all the way down. Now I think we're ready for the plant itself. And I can't decide what angle I want to put it at. Maybe we'll put it in this way and allow it to grow out that way. Or do we want it to hug the pole? You know what, let's face this little nubbin I showed you, let's face that towards the pole. 
So I don't know what other people do, but what I like to do is plant the plant itself and then tie it to the pole, just so that I don't get everything all wonky. <laughs> so I'm holding the plant close to the pole in one hand and then scooping soil in with the other. Some of these aerial roots are getting buried, but that's okay. Just trying to make certain that I get all the roots under the soil instead of hanging out on top. So I'm not packing it down. I'm just kind of sifting it settling it. So I may wrap these roots. I'll have to show you guys. Woo. I may wrap these roots around like this and just kind of let it do its thing. And then also tie the plant itself to the to the pole. So what I'm using, a lot of people will use felt tape or the Velcro tape, but I'm just using green wire. In fact, you can just use bread tie, bread bag ties. It's totally up to you. You can also weave it into the pole or you can wrap it around the pole like this, whatever you prefer to do. It's creative liberties you're, li you're allowed to take. super tight I don't want to choke the plant but I also want it to stay right up against the pole um, I would also recommend twisting it in the back not in front of the plant so I'm gonna redo this Also tying underneath the nodes so that it doesn't inhibit growth. this to be true to its name, Gigantium. Now that it's settled a little bit, I'm adding some more soil just so that it can stay where it's at and not move. You are also totally welcome to add a pole up the center of your moss pole. When I say pole, I mean some sort of bar or piece of bamboo or a stick inside of it. Um, in that case, it would hold a lot heavier plants to it or just keep it from wobbling. If you have small children, like I will have in the next couple of months, he'll be more mobile. Um, you might want a more steady plant or, you know, follow your child around like a helicopter mom. That's probably going to be my plan because I have so many plants that he can get into. I'm probably just going to be the helicopter mom that I wish that I wasn't. wrapping the aerial roots around just for decoration really not for any reason just because I think it's fun and I'm gonna tuck them back in here because why not maybe they'll grow into the pole All right, 
there she is. Let me know what you thought of today's experiment down in the comments below, or if you tried this yourself, let me know how it went. Feel free to follow me on Instagram to see more day-to-day -day content. I'm at I'm Fronde of You. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to DM me there. If you'd like to see more YouTube content, hit that subscribe button and the bell button so that you're notified every time that I post. And that's all for today. See you guys next week.